Welcome back, everybody. After we took a brief break on the Talks with Taylor Hendricks podcast, we are back and we are discussing films that are coming out in the month of October that I am totally excited about that I want to highlight for you guys. And the one we just mentioned was coming out on October 8th with a release date of, I believe, November 11th in Australia is No Time to Die, the most recent installment in the ever-evolving saga of James Bond and 007. Yeah. I actually grew up watching some of those with my grandma uh, when I was like super, super, super young, like before age five. So I was really, really excited. I think back then it was like Sean Connery. So this will be the last official appearance of Daniel Craig as James Bond himself. Uh, this will be really cool. Uh, it's the synopsis for this film is actually apparently going to be where uh, it, it's, it's interesting because I'm trying to pick and choose what to say because we're actually going to talk about this again in another segment on this podcast. So I'm going to be a little bit brief <laughs> here. Um, so apparently Daniel Craig as James Bond is retired and he's living pretty. He's happy. He's chill. He's living his best life as a retired <laughs> 007 in Jamaica. Um, and his solitude has been disturbed one day when a former CIA friend of his comes to him for help. Uh, to stop one of the most vile, evil, dastardly villains with the most up-to-date technology that they've ever seen in the Bond saga. So that is what's going on for No Time to Die. Super exciting. Uh, this will be the last official time that Daniel Craig will be James Bond. Uh, very, very, I'm, I'm actually like really stoked to see that because I really like Daniel Craig. Um, <laughs> next one is South of Heaven starring uh, Jason Sudeikis and uh, Evangeline Lilly. I love both of them. I just started watching Ted Lasso and I am in love with it in love with him uh not not him like but just like the the actual ted lasso character love ted lasso like just his positivity his energy and his you know like goonies never say die sort of you know attitude i just love that uh like that's goals in my opinion i feel like i'm a combination of roy kent meets ted lasso <laughs> meets rebecca <laughs> And then, like, some of my sense of humor is definitely Keely. <laughs> so those are kind of, like, my personalities, you know, uh, when they decide to show up and, I, you know, <laughs> But I, I, when I'm feeling particularly sassy, I'm definitely, like, Roy Kent. Uh, when I'm trying to, you know, make a change or, you know, trying to, you know, uplift people and, and stuff like that and trying to do what others think that I can't do. I definitely try to be like a Ted Lasso. So it's just very interesting. Like they've done such a great job on that show. I just officially finished season one last night during cardio. So I cannot wait to do number, uh, not wait to like watch season two. I'm so excited for season two. Okay. So anyway, uh, South of Heaven starring these two Evangeline Lily is like such a badass. I love her in Ant-Man and Wasp. I loved her in the, the Hobbit uh, films. And then I also loved her obviously in Lost. <laughs> um, this, uh, this film has a really interesting, uh, you know, write up and synopsis. It is about a man who is a convicted felon who gets released on parole after serving 12, a 12 year sentence for, <laughs> I think something to do with burglary. Um, and he leaves uh, and finds out that his childhood love, Annie, is dying of, I think, cancer. So he wants to give her the best last year of her life as possible. Unfortunately, things do not go according to plan. Bom, bom, bom. I actually really want to see that. It looks really good. <laughs> the next one is coming out um, in the second week of October. It's called The Manor, and it's starring Barbara Hershey. And it's about this um, elderly woman who I think starts uh, coming down with dementia. Um, and she finds herself in a situation where she can't necessarily care for herself on her own anymore and she needs a little bit of help. So she ends up going to live at this uh, <coughs> elderly facility called The Manor. And after she befriends another individual there, another man, uh, things start to take a very interesting turn and not necessarily for the better possibly supernatural and she tries to warn people about impending deaths and so forth even her grandson and nobody really takes her seriously or believes her they think it's just you know a part of you know her dementia or whatever and so she decides that the only way that she can possibly survive is to figure out a way out so that sounds really cool <laughs> and then of course on October 15th we have Tom Hardy coming back with Venom let there be carnage 
bitch. <laughs> I actually really love the Venom character. I think he's a very, I think Venom is a very complex character in comics. So I'm always all about that. Um, and then one of the main reasons I wanted to do this segment today is because I have been waiting for this film for the last year. On October 15th, not only will you have Venom, let there be carnage. You have to say it like that, I'm sorry. Uh, you will also be getting Halloween Kills. Super stoked for this. You're going to see Jamie Lee Curtis, Anthony Michael Hall, uh, Judy Greer, Danny McBride, and others. Um, this story is following up right where the other one left off. So after... Uh, after Lori thinks that, you know, they officially caught Michael Myers in their trap and the house is burning down, that's pretty much where it left off. <laughs> that's exactly where they're picking up at the beginning of this film. And so Lori gets rushed to the hospital to deal with her life-threatening injuries that she does have, but they were, you know, ignoring because, you know, they have this psychopathic serial killer, you know, trying to kill everybody. So um, they're at the hospital and then somehow, some way, you know, true to form, Michael Myers manages to find a way to escape that trap in the burning house. And he sets about to continue on his mission, his business. And so Lori, her daughter and her granddaughter and some other survivors of Michael Myers' original attack all band together in this like sort of vigilante justice as they try to hunt down Michael Myers once and for all. Super excited for this one. Super excited. Ah, can't wait. <laughs> then there's the next one that I haven't heard anything about, um, but it stars some, you know, uh, major players. So maybe you guys have heard of it and I just hadn't because, you know, I, I, I live under a rock. Uh, <laughs> it's called The Last Duel and it's going to be starring Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Ridley Scott and more. And it's about this uh, knight who comes back after... <clears throat> this uh, mission. He's a Norman Knight and he comes back to his home in Scotland to find his wife accusing his best friend of like rape or some sort of sexual offense. And he has to come in and kind of deal with that. And I think it ends up in a duel, hence the last duel. <laughs> um, okay, next I'm super stoked about uh, is called Monster Family. We are getting to see Monster Family 2 uh, starring Jason Isaacs, Emma Watson, and others. And I'm super excited about this one. The Monster Family has to kind of change themselves into some ghoulish characters to kind of uh, save uh, the Loch Ness Monster, uh, the Yeti, and a king from uh, some monster hunters. So that sounds like super cool, gothy and cute and fun for the whole family. I'm super excited. Um, next is coming out on October 20th and I actually recently saw hype for this and I was like so, I was like, man, I wish I would have known about the casting for this because I totally would have thrown my hat into that ring, so to speak. It looks really good. <laughs> it's called Night Teeth and one of the main characters is Megan Fox. Megan Fox makes a huge return. It is about these vampires in like the downtown grungy, underground LA scene who um, get a ride from I think a cab driver and he just thinks that you know they're these innocent hot women right and little does he realize exactly what's about to happen <laughs> so yeah his night goes terribly wrong and he kind of gets immersed into their culture in this you know underground vampire sort of society Whoa. <laughs> Okay, this one is also really cute. It's called Ron's Gone Wrong. So when I read the synopsis for this film, I honestly thought, <laughs> I was like, wow, this is kind of a really cute animated social commentary almost for kind of the world we live in today, in my opinion. So it's basically about a boy and a robot. The, um, in this day and age, uh, the movie, you know, is about, you know, social media and the intricacies of friendship and, and self-esteem and stuff. And so you basically, you basically can get a friend in a box. And so this kid named, uh, kid gets a robot and just so much goes wrong in these awkward social situations that really show what true friendship truly actually is in its entirety. And I think that's like a really sweet, wholesome sort of story to tell, especially in this day and age with social media, friendships, likes, comments, swipe rights, and all of that other crap. So <laughs> really, really cool. On October 9th, we have a film coming out called A Mouthful of Air, starring Amanda Seyfried, uh, Finn Wittrick, uh, Paul Giamatti, and others. And it's about this, you know, this woman who is a uh, 
best-selling uh, children's author, and uh, she has kind of been living a really good life. She has a she has a, a loving husband. She loves her child. She has a really good life, and stuff starts to go wrong after she has her second child, and you know these secrets that she has been keeping to herself kind of start coming to the forefront, and things start happening. Boom, boom, boom. Um, this next one is called Antlers, and it stars Guillermo del Toro, Carrie Russell, Amy Madigan, and others. And it's about um, this uh, this teacher and a police officer who end up entangled with this child who isn't necessarily uh, what the child seems, and things start getting eerie. I really love a lot of the stuff that Guillermo del Toro does. He's done some really great stuff on Netflix. And then <clears throat> last but not least, the one I want to talk about because I could have done the whole podcast on all of the crazy amounts of films that are coming out this coming month um, is Army of Thieves. This is apparently the prequel to Zack Snyder's hit film Army of the Dead. So it's kind of really cool. This uh, this was starring uh, Dave Bautista and quite a few other awesome actors. And this basically is the prequel in the sense that it, it follows the story of uh you do you guys know the, the 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 guy that they hired in army of the dead to basically uh his one major job was to survive getting into vegas with the group so he could be the one to attempt to unlock that impossible to crack safe well this uh this uh this film army of the thieves is the prequel in the sense that it follows his story on getting uh getting hired by this this uh, group of not so great individuals to do exactly that across Europe before the before army of the dead